Welcome to Ritzhawk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversation. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hang what? on. Time out. Stop the Why? music. Wait a second. Bro, you messed wait, it up my intro. Bro. Wait. What? This is Christmas time. All right, we need some good Christmas oh. uplifting music, man. Oh, We're going to talk okay. about how Christ, how to keep Christ the center focus of the Christmas season. How can we do that with listening to Paul's amazing music? We're just going to be distracted. We need some good jingles, man. You know what, dude? You got some jingles for us? I got you. Let's go. How about them jingles, bro? I like it. How about them jingles? Those are some good jingles, man. Like, just listen to that, dude. That, if that doesn't put you into the Christmas spirit, I don't know like, what does. It's like a mixture of Adventures in Odyssey and the movie Elf. Well, what if people don't know what the Adventures of Odyssey is? That's why I said Elf. That's true. You know. Um, what's the other one that this reminds us of a little bit? I don't know. There's a lot. Okay, so here's a fun question before we even get into the podcast. Favorite Christmas movie of all time? Miracle Go. on 31st Street, the 90s edition. Whoa, dude, I haven't seen that movie since the 90s. Man, that's my favorite. One. Really? I watch it every out year. of all it. the Christmas out of movies. Every, all the Christmas movies, that is my number one. Favorite. Well, it's the close follow, close second is Jingle All the Way. Who who's the Arnold main lead? In that? Oh. <laughs> you picked the wrong day. See, I actually <laughs> thought that you were gonna say like. Um, like either uh, a Christmas Carol, like Muppets Christmas Carol. No, go drop good. that out. I, I, I mean, any Christmas movie is pretty good with me. Polar Express, all those. I, I thought you were going to say maybe uh, Elf. But Elf is good. But here's my favorite. You ready? All right, let's hear it. The Santa Claus. Oh, Tim. Yeah. Which one? Alan. One, two, one. or three? One, yeah, one, one, that's one. Probably I best. love the third one with Martin Short, where he was Jack Frost. I, I like him. I like his it's acting. Our, it, the the storyline was a bit cheesier. I like the storyline oh, of two. So cheesy. I like the storyline of two better than three. But uh, like one oh, is my favorite. Two is where they had to find a Mrs. Claus, right? Right. And they that made, one was fun. I like that one because of the toy Santa. Oh, we got rules and coal and coal, 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 toys, toys, toys. <laughs> you know, he's pl- Tim Allen put all the plastic <laughs> prosthetics on to make himself look like That's a toy. That's funny, but but the, the the Santa Claus movies, Tim Allen's are hands down. I I also love. Christmas with the Cranks. Yes, that's with another, Tim Allen. Like I said, I like. I, I don't think there's a I Christmas love movie Tim I Allen, don't man. like. But the fact is that Tim Allen my is Santa Claus. My ch- I watched Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street, like the the girl that played Matilda or whatever back in the nineties. That one. Okay. That not the old school one from like the sixties or whatever it was. You make it sound like I'm as old as you, boss. The nineties one, man. The, the, I'll pull it up here. I'll show you. What's the uh, What's the Christmas movie that everyone freaks out about? Uh, white? No, no, no. Is it white? No, well, there's there's White Christmas. Right, um, that's a good one. Ah, uh, what's it's the black and white one. There's White Christmas and it was like the dude. Didn't he like go into the future and then like that's, that's um, isn't that White Christmas? I thought there was another one. You know, people are probably screaming oh, at us I, right I now of what what this, classic this is Christmas the, movie. That's the 1994. Black. Oh yeah, yeah. I had that cover. So that that's well, I had that. It's, it's, it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. That's what I it is. I have never seen it. So, yeah. And I don't care if You've I ever do. You've never seen that one? Nope. I've never have seen you, it. Have you seen the VeggieTales spinoff of it? VeggieTales did a spinoff of it. Well, what was theirs? It's, it's a wonderful life. Oh, I don't know if I'd ever not. It's pretty good. It's but, but either way, my that. favorite one is Santa Claus, Tim Allen. All That's right. my favorite Christmas movie. Well, what are we drinking tonight? I Actually... We're not drinking um, coffee because it's the you holidays. You think we should be drinking like you? You would we need think like we'd egg, be drinking some hot chocolate or like eggnog or something. Like we're doing hot not, chocolate next episode because that sounds tasty. Okay, well, we'll that's, do hot that's gonna be a little different. I'm drinking Lacroix. I'm drinking Dr Pepper because it makes the world <laughs> taste better. I mean Lacroix, the uh, Raz Cranberry. I accidentally, but, I accidentally bought watermelon. And I just it's want, gross. I just want to say thank you, Beth Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> these are you're these, snagging her Dr. Pepper collection. These are, this is her Dr. Pepper. Oh I'm my goodness! I'll take you. Snagging. Appreciate you sharing. But either way, man. So today, if I remember right, is it, it's Christmas Eve, right? It is Christmas Eve. Yes. Yes. So we're gonna try to. to so we're gonna try to keep this short because gonna, it's Christmas Eve. Yeah. Let's let's just dive. Let's just dive right into it, man. Why? How? What are some ways we can keep Christ at the focus? Of this Christmas season, I like it. Let's let's just hit it, man. Let's, let's hit it because we got no reviews to read. Nothing. Red let's drink just, coffee. Let's just, go. Let's just dive right let's in. Go. So wow, I just see I see a very big misprint here <laughs> on one of my verses. Psalm one ninety nine. Um, what? <laughs> Psalm probably one nineteen. Yeah. Uh, that's what. Bad it is. to you, but anyway, sorry. Um, so uh, the Reverend Billy Graham once said, "The very purpose of Christ coming into the world was that He might offer up His life as a sacrifice for our sins, for the sins of men. He came to die. This is the heart of Christmas. Mm, that's and that's the end of the podcast. That's the Have heart a, of Christmas. That's, that's the heart of Christmas, right there. 
So what are some ways that we can keep Christ at the focus of our Christmas celebrations? Uh, quick four points. And yeah, four points and four points in a poem. We're, we're Baptist point, pastors right now. Four, four points and three scriptures, and we're out of here like, uh, I don't know, baby coming out at birth. We're out of here like Santa after he just dropped off his presents. And oh, his that's a good one. I used a disgusting one, and you just <laughs> used a really good one. It's Christmas season, boss. Sorry. Anyways, uh, point number one, read the story of the birth of of Jesus as a family. Mm. You'll find that all four of these points that I put down is very family oriented. Yeah. That's so. really a, a big part of the Christmas season. So, but reading the story of the birth of Jesus together as a family, I like that. This is a very important thing because we should know how our savior came into the world. I mean, he created the world, but then right. he made himself hundred percent man. Yeah, Like I know a lot of famous who read Luke two for before they open their presents. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that's always a good way to keep, to remember what the season is, you know, <clears throat> originally I was thinking about, okay, should I just do an episode and we talk about, you know, was Christ born on December 25th? And, right, yep. And I feel like pastors and podcasts and everybody hit on that one a lot. And uh, if you don't know, no, Christ was not born on December 25th. Uh, there's nope. two There's two theories out there. There's a theory that he was born in uh, September, and then there's a theory he was born in, like, May or April. So, uh Nobody really knows. They didn't, they, they, didn't, they didn't think about stuff like, hey, when was Christ born back then in the early church? They thought about, hey, it's more important of when he died because mm-hmm. that did a lot for us. So right, yep. it actually didn't come around to them trying to figure out when he was born until the third or fourth century. So interesting fact. I like that. I know that one. Yep. But uh, so, yeah, it's it's important to read the the, the story. Um, it's a very important story. I actually just wrote my, my, uh, my reminders. I don't know if you saw it or not. My... My Usborne Christmas book got all ripped to shreds by my kids, but I need to buy a new Christmas story for us. <laughs> so we actually do, um, and uh, it's it's 15 days leading up to, excuse me, I got to burp real fast. Sorry about that. Nasty. Sorry about that. But uh, we have like an ornament, like an Advent ornament thing where we go through and we read really? something about Christ every day, and it comes with a little, or- like, a, like a cardboard ornament, and then we hang the ornament on a tree. We have a small tree dedicated just for that. And it's just, so we do it like 14 days ahead of Christmas. Is it like, if, if this website loads? It's called like Advent of, uh, Ad, Advent and Ornaments or something like that. I found it at Goodwill, complete, like never Dude, used. for real. And I was like, at Goodwill. Yeah, it was like three bucks or something. I'm like, I got to get this. This is before we had kids, and I was all excited about it because we were pregnant with Piper at the time. Oh, but, and, um, is it like this? Similar to that, yes. Okay. Yep. So that's really cool. Um, I'm gonna put this link in the show notes. It's only a two hundred dollar thing, but maybe you yeah. can find it at Goodwill for cheap for three bucks, like I did. <laughs> um, so then uh, number two is uh, spend time as a family discussing the importance of Christ's birth. So you read the story, then stop, take a minute to really discuss with the family. It doesn't matter how old your kids are, or if you have no kids and you're just a spouse. Or, hey, you're single and you're just going over to the family's house for Christmas mm. celebrations. It doesn't matter. You should read this together, especially if you're a Christian family. His, his Read about his birth and discuss the importance of why it's important and why is it important that we remember it. Um, I like that. And, and why it's not about Santa Claus and gift giving. And I mean, it is about gift giving because we got given the greatest and, and, gift And of all. you can listen to last year's Christmas episode about how we talked about Santa Claus and where he came right, from and St. Right. Nick and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So... Um, uh, the point number three is spend time as a family in prayer together. And this is, hmm. is another very good thing to do. Um, so often, you know, we're all about the hustle and bustle at Christmas. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but my Christmases all my life have been very busy going from place to place to place to place to place to place to place. Because there's it, so many Christmases and Christmas Eve services. Right, and, and the only time we pray is at mealtime. And that's hmm. it. And it's like, man, why aren't we praying together asking uh, thanking God for what he did and coming to this earth to die for our sins and then asking him how we can better serve him throughout this next year. I mean, I know it's not quite New Year's Eve, but it's uh, close, man. It's one of those things that you start thinking about now. It's a week away. Uh, number four is spend time as a family helping other people. Hmm. Again, Christ came to this earth and died for us. He did something for us. That's a great gift. So we should be able to be willing to love other people just like he commanded us to. And to, and to go out and help others if they're in need at this time. Of and the year. Bible even says, you know, no man is greater than their master. So right. if the master was washing people's feet and, and serving other people and, you know, Philippians 2, where he humbled himself to do this, right. shouldn't we therefore humble ourselves? Exactly. As well? So I got a couple of scriptures here that kind of tie in these four points a little bit together. I'm going to read through them. We can give some final thoughts yeah. and maybe some Christmas greetings to people, and then we can just end it. We're not going to keep you guys long today. Nope. Uh, we know everybody's busy, but. Maybe you're listening to this while you're getting ready in the morning before 
the festivities begin. I love it, man. I love so it. So Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 8 says, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. So this is talking about, back in Deuteronomy, this is talking about the law, but the law is a version. Uh, it's God showing who he is by these commands, right? To his people. To his, to his chosen people. And he's telling them that they should be teaching this to their children. They should be talking about it. They should be thinking about it when they're lying down, when they rise. They should always be thinking about these things and talking about these things. And, and similarly, we should be doing the same. And uh, not just during Christmas season, but during right. all the time. But Christmas is a very easy, obvious time it's, to do it's it. So, you know, you know it's a, it presents itself as a time where really Christians in general, yes, we have fun with, with Santa Claus and all this stuff. Oh, of course. But, uh, and we love the family aspect of it. But we are saying, hey, this, we're celebrating Jesus' birth today. We know it's not today, mm -hmm. but we are celebrating the fact that he came because we don't know when it is. Right. And so it's easy to, to really think about his words. And, and I still think about you know this, the common theme that we've had throughout this whole season is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love, love your, your neighbor as yourself. yourself. And so um, this is one of those things that th these are his words. These are Christ's laws, and we should be meditating upon them and teaching them to our children and talking about them. Uh, when we're in our house and when we walk by the way and when we lie down and when we rise. So mm. uh, the next verse is Psalm 119, 9 through 16. And man, people are probably like, that's a that sounds like a long verse. Uh, it's not that long. <laughs> no. It says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With all my heart I have sought thee, I uh, sought you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O God. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I proclaim all the judgments of your mouth. I rejoice in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And again, this ties back into the Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. where we're supposed to be meditating upon him. We're supposed to be talking about him. But this is word. a personal thing. The, uh, right. the Deuteronomy was parents do this. Right. Psalm 119 is, is I, I will do this. Exactly. Yep. So uh, the, like la that. the last one I have is John 15, 12 through 17. It says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends, which Christ did for us. This is the whole purpose of why he came. This is the purpose of the season. Uh, you are my friends. If you do what I command you, no longer do I call you servants for a servant does not understand what his master is doing, mm. but I've called you friends because everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is my command to you, love one another. And this ties into that point four of, uh, as a family, we should be searching out for opportunities to help To love one another. And to love people. Exactly. I love so. it, man. I love That's it. That's all I got, man. Nice, short, sweet, and to the point. So. Yeah. I got, I got one thing. It's not a final thought. It's a resource. Oh. It's a book. Oh, it's a book. So night. the book is called The Purpose of Christmas. It was written by Rick Warren. I actually have it on my shelf right over there. I've, I've done sermon series out of it. It's a really short book. You can read it in literally about 30 minutes, something like that. Um, but the, the back of the book, it asked the question, why is Christmas such a big deal? If you start to think about it, is it astonishing that a simple unassuming birth of a peasant boy more than 2,000 years ago in the Middle East changed the course of history. That night, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. A small group of poor shepherds were quickly tending their flocks to sheep in a nearby field looking up at the stars. Nothing seemed to be any different than a thousand other nights, but what was about to happen would transform not only their lives, but billions of other lives as well. The world would never be the same again. Regardless of your religious background, you need to know how the, the three great purposes of Christmas meets your three greatest needs understanding and receiving god's christmas gift you like that god's christmas gift which is right. jesus to you will transform your life forever um, i'll put the link to that book in the show notes but it's the purpose of christmas by rick warren to help you even just maybe focus on what the purpose of christmas is like right. these are ways that we can you know help us keep our focus but if you want to learn to be able to explain to others what the purpose of christmas was that's a great resource to have um yeah, that's my final thought, man. So before we let the people go, though, do we do we have a fun fact for them? We do, but do I, we really? I want to. I want to. I want to touch on something. I just got to type it up and figure out what it's called again. Um, so there, I, I would recommend if you have a 
have a chance today where you're not doing much um, to go on to VidAngel or if you have the um, YouTube or anything and g- uh, type in um, The Chosen, The Shepherd. Oh, Reimagine TV, right? I think that's the other place it's located. Maybe, but this is uh, the, the, the special episode. It's a Christmas episode. It's called The Shepherd, and it's about the shepherds in the field uh, watching their flock by night and, and all that. And um, it goes into a little bit of, if you know much about your history, um, the early church believed that these shepherds that, that came and sought Christ when he was born um, were Levitical priests and that the lambs were actually the sacrificial lambs that uh, were being raised. So it was amazing that these shepherds found the sacrificial lamb lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. And these swaddling clothes were actually something that the uh, the Levitical um, priests would do to the newborn lambs to keep them pure and their blemishes from um, or from getting a blemish. And so it's it's very it, that's what it's like a 19 minute uh, 19 minute little short video. And if you've got a chance, uh, I would highly recommend you go watch it. Like I said, it's it's the chosen. It's called the Shepherd. Yeah, I'll put the the link to the whole show. Just yeah, yeah. as you can see, I'm right wearing, there. Yeah, I'm wearing the hat right now. Uh, I love. It's just an amazing. Um, I binged mi- the whole first series. In it's an amazing <laughs> in ministry, like three man. days. So, um, but yeah, uh, that's all. That's all I got is just an encouragement to go do that if you haven't done that. So I love it. Time for fun facts with Philly. <laughs> Your kids are so cute. All right. So what's the fun fact we got for Christmas, my dude? So do me a favor, Marks. Play lightly our little jingle again because Ooh. this is a Christmas fun fact. And I think we should just end the show with our little Christmas jingle and we'll go through it. Um, this is a little different for people. Uh, so the first ever broadcast was a Christmas carol radio broadcast. Really? The first ever okay. broadcast was a Christmas carol. On Christmas Eve in 1906, the Canadian inventor Reginald uh, Fessenden from eight, he lived from 1866 to 1932, played Oh Holy Night on the violin and sang the final verse while broadcasting from his Brant Rock radio tower in Massachusetts. That's awesome, dude. The Isn't first it? ever song on the radio was Oh Holy, oh Night. Holy Night. That's yeah. beautiful, man. Yeah, so. Well, hey, guys, we hope you're having a great Christmas with your family. Keep checking us out. Hit us up at Facebook, Instagram, email, Real Talk Christian Podcast at gmail.com, or even the website, Real Talk Christian Podcast.com. It's a little late to get your merch in time for Christmas. It is, but you, but, can, you can go ahead and order your merch and have it for the beginning of the year. I mean, start, maybe, start maybe, off the year right. I mean, that'd be the right thing to do. You know, by the end of January, you'd have it, and so you could. Just I mean, I mean, I right. have the wristband of what would Jesus do, and I'm. I mean, I'm not going to say what he's going to do. Uh, I mean, my shirts. I probably need to order a new shirt. You probably need it's, to order it's a new shirt. A little raggedy, but. <laughs> but either way, guys, you can reach out to us. The best way to go is to the website or just check us out at anywhere social media. You can find us at realtalkchristianpodcast.com. But until next time, guys. Hey, take it easy.